Um, all right, so I gave you no prep other than this is laid back. So we've got some, uh, you made just a traditional Manhattan, correct? Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. Hey, welcome. Thanks for coming. This. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, so we, this little series that we're doing in our, our new little... <laughs> lounge yeah a little silly lounge thing with a couch uh basically we're just trying to highlight trainers in the area that we work with that we think do great stuff um i know that you and i have got you know close to a 10-year history here uh, but you're not in here very often because you know how to train your body and you know how to train your clients so we're not we're not getting a whole lot of clients from you and we're not seeing you very often which is great but um why don't you just kind of start off with how you got into the the industry I know you're a business owner at Back to Basics, which is in Westerville. What's the, what are we supposed to remember? Yeah, How to get there? Right? Yeah, near Cheryl's Cookies. Near so, Cheryl's every, Cookies. Everyone knows where Cheryl's Cookies yeah. is. Yeah. After the workout, we're supposed to go to Cheryl's Cookies right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right. job security. Yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> so you're you're there, but like, get us into the industry. Like, what'd you do before? Or like, why do you uh, remember how? Or? So in college, I was a health ed and phys ed. That I was going to be a teacher. Yeah. Didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to be something where I worked with people, help people, that kind of thing. At the same time, I liked working with kids. And in my senior year of college, when I was getting ready to start my teaching license, I got in trouble. Been there. And I uh, decided, well, I need to find a job because I had to wait a little bit of time until I got my teaching license, I think like a year or something. So I got a job at a, it was a uh, fitness facility but the idea was you go in, you use each ma machine for a certain amount of time, yep. and then you leave. And my job was They're to work curves. with the kids on a Wii. So they had a Wii, and it was never busy, so I was paid to learn how to bowl and golf and play tennis on the Wii. So for four or five hours, I'm going in. <laughs> Started getting a little tendonitis from you know, putting oh, too yeah. much spin on the nice. ball. But no, I, I, I got out of that, met a friend of mine. He was over at Urban Active, which is... Yeah, no now, fitness. well, now it's East Porta. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. just, yeah, they keep changing it. Changes. They um, opened up this one right here on Tuttle, which is amazing. Because mm -hmm. when I moved in, it was designed for personal trainers. Okay. And so it has like a, a 40 yard long track. It has a, it had tires. I could do sledgehammer stuff. It had all these cool areas, but it didn't have any room for classes or anything else. But then it just wasn't doing it. They sold to LA Fitness. And now I think LA Fitness still owns it, but it's just a Sporto maybe, or I don't know. You were just over there, weren't you? Yeah, the Sports. Hillier Rome one, yeah. not that one, but yeah. The anyway. one over here is nice. Anyway, yeah, talked so to him. There. They were looking for trainers. The Polaris one was just opening or getting ready to open. Um, I was there for opening day. Started getting clients there. I was training like between two weeks. You know, they paid you out every two weeks or something. I was training like 140 to 160 half hour sessions in a two week span. Yeah. Busy quick. And it was awesome because I had no training background other than sports. I got my ACSM certification, so I had that background, a little bit of college education, and then um, it was a great place to start because I didn't get a choice in my clientele. I didn't get to choose anything about it other than here's your client, and I got people from young people, old people, injuries, all over the board. Yep. People that, you know, whatever their goal was, I had it, all of them. So it was a good place to start to learn how to work with all different yeah, types all of Yeah, all populations. All populations, yeah. And then, uh, what, about a year in or so, things were happening there with payment with trainers. A lot of trainers were leaving because they were, things were getting Stuff. messed up. Stuff was happening. So we left there and decided I was going to go out on my own. Went to a small studio in Westerville, actually one complex south of where I am. Oh, now. really? Yeah. So I was there for about a year and a half. My wife was like freaked out. She's like, you just need to go get a teaching job. And I'm like, there's no jobs. It was 2009, yeah. 2010, mm. you know, the crash had just happened. Yeah. All the teachers I knew that were especially phys ed or health were all getting ripped. Nobody had job security. If I wanted a job, I had to go to Carolinas or something. So I was like, let's try this. If it doesn't work out. I still have my teaching license and I can go back to it. Mm -hmm. So tried it, clientele started building up. I was there for about a year and a half, two years, and then uh, Katzmore was open his gym across the street and it was a bigger space I started having some athletes it was way more room some newer equipment so I was like oh, I'm gonna go there and it was literally across the parking yeah. lot 
So moved to that. I was there for seven years and then uh, worked with a bunch of different trainers. It's cool because you get to pick your clientele now and who you want to work with, that kind of a thing. And they then, had a cool approach there with the, the whole Poliquin thing. So Charles Poliquin, for those of you who've never heard, was an incredibly famous sort of pioneering uh, godfather of strength training, you know, in the 90s and 2000s, and he wrote for Testosterone Magazine, and, you know, he had all these seminars and was kind of like this sort of wizard mad scientist that if you came up in that generation, which I did, right. you sort of admired him, and I know that a lot of the trainers over there were into that approach, and, and from my opinion, having been sort of come through that pedigree, I think it's a great place to come through. So you, you learn a little bit in Urban Active, did it on your own a little bit, then you go in there and you get exposed to like this kind of really specific high-end version of strength training. Right. And then you're able to kind of like take those and amalgamate them together into what you do now. Well, to take it back, uh, when I was at Urban Active, I was there with a, a guy who was on the Ultimate Fighter. So I thought, well, I'm gonna do that. So I learned how to train <laughs> with like the MMA type training. Yeah. You know, five rounds here, four rounds there, totally different training style, high intensity. Um, and then my background was sports, and then after sports and before I got to personal training, it was more like the old school bodybuilding, chest day, back day, leg day. So I had a little bit of background there, a little background of sports, a little bit of MMA, went to here, had some different advice from those guys. Andy didn't want uh, independent contractors, and I was the first one that he brought on. So I didn't have to go with that, Charles Falkland, like mentality he kind of taught me a little bit of it which i learned a lot which was cool but he allowed me to kind of do what i wanted to do because i was an independent right. and then he had crossfit there at the same time and opened up a second space next to that so i had a personal training side which was like your machines your cables your dumbbells squat, yeah, squat rack and, then and just on the other side of the wall was this huge room with you know Rank crossfit rigs and, rigs and, and rings and but all. crossfit was also on the other side of that so i had this whole room with turf everything and i was the only independent contractor so i had this whole gym to myself which was awesome and i was learning from him learning from some other guys that ended up coming on there and then decided you know what i kind of want to do this on my own i don't know where i'm going to go next i don't know what the next step is and then a space opened up literally a complex north of where I was. And then, By Cheryl's uh, Cookies. By Cheryl's, By Cheryl's cookies. cookies, yeah. yeah. I heard I'm that. not sure where that is. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I went there and then... We do the same thing here, by the way. So I was like, oh, where's your office? And I'd say it's between Graders and Cornhenge. <laughs> Cornhenge is that really weird field of concrete corn in the corner of Rings Road in France. And some people are like, oh, okay. They know exactly where it is. Yeah. Like, exactly. Like, oh, they know where Mention Graders food, is. People know where it's at. Yeah. Yep, that's right. But yeah, we got, we've got a bunch of different trainers that all have different backgrounds now. And it's really cool setting because we all kind of play off each other. It's a fun group for sure. Even in the middle of a training session, someone's like, man, this is really, this is bothering me. And if I can't figure it out, I got a guy who's got his master's in everything. And I'm like, hey, what do you think of this? And he's like, well, I'd, I'd try this. And then I'd you know, talk to one of the other guys. And That's we amazing. all kind of play off each other. We work out together, give each other different ideas. And yeah, it's it's pretty cool. And we have a setup at, like that here, basically. Like, if we've got weird cases or something, we'll refer back and forth. Like, yeah. do you check this guy? Out? I, I don't. I don't know what's going on here. Like, you know, go see Jordan or go see Brad or go see Ben and right. just get a different set of eyes on it. Still, kind of the same approach. I always describe it as like we're the we use the same ingredients in terms of the techniques, but it's just a different chef. So you're gonna get a different meal out of that. Yeah. And we all have, of course, different personalities. Yeah. Some better than others, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing, same thing there. You know, we got guys that are like super quiet and they only talk if you approach them and talk about what the problem is or what the. That's me you know, here. The is. <laughs> so very withdrawn. Very withdrawn. Very introverted. Textbook introvert. But you know, and then I'll text you sometimes and use my other resources as well. Um, no, then, you've been fun to work with, but like we get almost nobody from you, which is totally fine because you're so good with and I've watched you train and I've trained with you you're so good with like no if that's if that's hurting then you know let's let's no point doing it if it's hurting I mean think about um your friend from high school will say I don't even think he'd care if I brought up his name but like right. you managed him so well and you know and he dinged his back up pretty good actually had some leg symptoms and it was so easy to co-manage him with you 
because I wasn't worried that you were going to do something ridiculous or say like, well, let's just try this or see. You were just like, no, we'll just switch over and do this. And what you may not know, but you've actually changed his mental approach to exercise. Mm -hmm. So he's not trying to do, you know, this over here. He's totally realizes that what you guys are doing is a value and he doesn't need to do super heavy back squats or super right. heavy deadlifts. And so his satisfaction with what you guys are doing is high because you've done a good job of, of explaining it to him and setting the precedent that like, no, 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 this is still fitness. You're still getting in good shape. Right. You're still exactly. doing good things and you can play golf and travel and do all those things. That's a guy you've known for a long time. Grade school. He could do yeah. the guy could not be nicer. Yeah, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. And he's a perfect example too. You know, he, he was an athlete, played college football and then still wanted to be competitive. But you know, he's got screws in his ankle, his shoulders messed up, and he wanted to do CrossFit because there's that competitive side of it and everything. And then he started training with me because he's like, I don't think CrossFit's for me anymore. My shoulder hurts, my back hurts, this hurts. I'm like, well, let's never the heard first, that first workout we start, right? First workout we started, I was like, let's let's just bench, see how you do. And I'm like, all right, your bench is all off. You got to pull the shoulders down. You know, let's focus on the lats and do this and that. And he's like, I think I've been benching wrong my whole life. No one's told me how to do this. So we, you know, you, you take things and you just kind of dumb it down for people. And that's the, the gym name is back to basics movement and training with the approach of let's take someone who's either new or even experienced, let's take them to the basics of movement, see how they function in those basic movements and then grow from there. Even if you are some Olympic lifter, I'm going to take you to the basic movements first and say, okay, great that you can squat 400 pounds, but you notice you shift a little bit. Let's take you back down to a bodyweight squat or put you on a box and let's fix it so that you might not have pain now, but you squat like that for the next two years. And all of a sudden you're going to go, my hip hurts, my back hurts. I wonder what I did. Yeah. That's yeah. like, well, it's just over squat. It's like neck, neck problems right now with everybody. Everybody says, I don't know what's going on with my upper back or my shoulder or my neck. And it's like, you didn't do anything. It's your daily routine where you're like this all Staring the time or like this or driving. You're in this awkward position and you'd be amazed how many people have the hardest issue of just that. They can't do it. It's so terribly it frustrating, is. but did you ever see the Seinfeld where um, George is all pissed because he's like, I go to my trainer and all he does is has me do the opposite of what I was doing all day. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's so maddening because it's totally accurate. Like yeah. if you're like, for us, so we get a ton of people that'll get shoulder, neck, oh, arm yeah. pain, whatever, and the exercise is this. It's literally the extreme opposite right. end. There's an entire approach, incredibly effective approach called McKenzie, that is just exactly what George from Seinfeld called out. It's so funny. Yeah, but like, you're kind of following a theme that we, like when we talked to all, some of these other personal trainers where uh, this transition from what we do here to what you guys do, especially, but more so with you talking about back to basics and building on those, the, the, those foundational blocks, I think that's such a huge service to, to the population because how often do we hear people say how like they've got this guy over here who does this form, this doctor who does this, this one. And then what we're able to do is have this open lines of communication with guys like you who we can get them out of pain, get them move better, but then the stuff that you guys do is just life-changing for these people where you're teaching them how to move again, teach them how to be strong. And that's, I think well, that's more powerful than a lot of the stuff we do. Sometimes. Well, it's the reps too. So we can get yeah. somebody, it's all on the same continuum. We can get somebody, like if they need therapy because there's an actual like tissue damage, when well, we have to kind of go in there and do that and we're gonna be super picky about it. And then we get them moving really, really well, but then they need reps. We're not gonna have, nobody's coming in, like insurance isn't gonna cover them to come in <laughs> right. and then just do like, okay, we need you to do 10,000 reps of a squat. Yeah. Right. Like, or 10,000 reps of a deadlift. It's like, that's just not happening. Right. And so if we can, you know, get them moving better and you and I have talked a bunch of times and then get them over to somebody like you, well, then you can just sort of take it from there. Mm -hmm. We've gotten them we off need, the ground. We need that reps right. for resili resiliency. And what's great about right having you down. guys. That's good. That's good. That's good. Reps, reps for resiliency. For resiliency. Yeah. That's a t-shirt. Do I have to quote you? Put that right here. I do that every every single, think every time. Single time. I think I'm going to do that here. <laughs> reps for reps resiliency. resiliency. I'm going to do that. I'm going to say Brad Muse, Rich Olm. I'll put Rich Olm. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, Wayne Gretzky. Sorry, we have to make a reference to the office. Ben's not here, but Ben would appreciate that for sure. But what's great about working with you guys is like, 
you know, I have a client, say I've been working with for a few years, like uh, my buddy. The guy. The guy. He doesn't care, but we'll just right. say the we'll guy. We'll say the guy. You know, all of a sudden. Very handsome, highly intelligent, been, highly intelligent. Highly okay, intelligent. Yeah, there you go. His back's been bothering him, or, or I have, you know, Betty, for example, or whatever. Whatever name you want to call it. Their, their hips bothering him, and I'm like, well, try these stretches. Let's get into this movement, see how it feels, rest it a couple days, come back. A few weeks later, they're still having that chronic pain, and I'm like, hey, go see these guys over at CCRC, and they're gonna have, you guys are gonna have a more in-depth approach of what's going on with their core, maybe it's spinal, maybe it's hip, maybe, but you guys are gonna look more in depth to it, teach them, and then I like working with you on that, you know, back and forth of yeah. where are they at, what should we avoid, what should we stick with, what should we, you know, Well, it's, it's super easy with working with trainers like you. It's like, we can literally, okay, I'll do an exam, and you know, the expectation of a client, if they went in there and you, and you just did, you know, range of motion assessment and light, like soft tissue work, they're gonna be like, what are we doing? Like, what the right. fuck are we doing? Right. They need to like work out. They want to feel like they got something out of that day. If they come in here, the expectation is that we're going. They're, they're not going to sweat. We're just going to do therapy stuff. And they're going to move better. Cool. That's that's the expectation. But if we come in and we actually work on, all I have to do with you is say, hey, I'll send you a text or something. It's like, hey, this is what I found. Here's the things that I would avoid. And then I totally trust you to just take them from there and just kind of go. I mean, our our friend, our mutual buddy. You know, he's a perfect example. I don't know if I would have done, I wouldn't have given such a long leash, so to speak, Especially to most trainers. Was. Yes, yes. So this individual um, in, injured his back pretty good to the point where he actually had weakness in his leg, which is a, a pretty significant injury. And the, we were able to rehab him back fine, and now he lifts fine. He's lifting, he's modifying, which is totally okay. Well, it's great too, because what you teach, he starts to implement as soon as he starts to have a flare-up. As soon as that flare up starts to happen, he drops the weight or does, stops whatever he's doing. Yep. He's like, give me something else. I'm starting to feel it. I'm not gonna do that anymore. And I'll, I'll be like, okay. And I'll think of, you know, whatever the goal for that day is and we'll completely change the movement, but still get our goal accomplished. Yeah. And then he'll go home and then I say, remember the stuff that you learned, do this stuff until he's, that flare up starts to go away and then he's good to go again. Yeah. For I. I give this speech to, to patients every single day and that's the three things that are necessary to treat something is one is therapy two is home exercises and three is lifestyle changes when they've gotten an injury and they're flared up you need all three of those pretty aggressively to get them better but then the first one that sort of drops down is the therapy right. then they stick with the home exercises in his case it's the press ups or whatever and then that one the frequency of that drops down to maybe just you know when he's going to sit for a long time or he's going to work out he'll do some there but the ones that never change are the lifestyle changes and you've got things like stand more than you sit he does that right you know sit with back support as often as you can okay uh you know try not to sit for more than 30 minutes at a time but then there's a bunch of of, of lifestyle changes modifications in the weight room that he does that you guys do where you know he's you know, maybe favoring a hinge over like a heavy barbell back squat. So you're doing more single leg stuff than you're doing bilateral stuff. You want to just make <clears throat> tweaks to it. And by the lifestyle changes have a massive reduction in the likelihood that it recurs, or if it does, he can manage it with the home exercise. Absolutely. And then my approach too, to, to fitness and most of my clients are general clientele, you know, general population, um, anyone ranging from right now, I don't have any athletes, but ranging from, 28 to 75, I think is my oldest client. I used to train somebody who was in their 90s. No way. Wow. Yeah. I, I went to her uh, uh, condo complex. My first time I went, I'm like, I don't have any idea how to train somebody who's 95. She was 95 years old. I'm like, I don't know what to do. I want, I want that one. So I'm like, like we're going to start here. And she walks in. She's got this tank top on. She's jacked. She's got gloves. She's like, <laughs> screw around, man. She, anything I could think of, she could do. Oh, no problem. Amazing. It was, it was She's insane. an anomaly. Yes. But most of my clients, it's either weight <clears throat> loss or uh, they're just looking for a lifestyle change. You know, most of my clients I've had for anywhere between 13 to five years. Uh, my earliest client, newest clients, maybe I've had for a couple years. So the, I, most of them, it's a lifestyle change. And that's what I preach. It's not you're going to come in here and you're just going to sweat and leave and you burn some calories. No, we're going to change your body. We're going to change your approach to fitness. We're going to change your mindset around exercise. You don't want to dread it. You know, I have a guy, this is a good example. I have a guy that um, 
he's almost reached 100 pounds in weight loss in the last year and a half. When he started with me, he's before that, he had lost weight before. He was up to almost 400 pounds. And he'd lost weight by not eating or doing things an unhealthy way. He's never put fitness into it. So he started working out with me. The first workout we did, you know, we're doing some body weight rows and he has to stop and he can't breathe. And, you know, my heart rate's too high. He's run multiple 5Ks now. He totally. has an entire gym in his garage. Uh, he rides his bike to the gym. Well, that just means he's, now. yeah, so you've changed his mindset and his he, approach he to fitness and health. Tracks his macros like crazy, tracks his nutrition. Okay. He's on top of it. How many medications did he get off of? He's off of his diabetic med medications. Um, That's huge. And that was the main one that he wanted to get off yeah. of. But yeah, they said, we don't think you're a diabetic anymore. They can't figure it out. And like, so well, silly. So he's healthier. He's like, it's weird. My doctor's yeah, never said you should try exercise. You well, know? it's amazing because <laughs> I had something today. Where's it? But actually doing it, doing it consistently. Well, he's, yeah. if, if you buy into it all and you change your lifestyle, it, it changes it down the road for for life. That it, You know, the whole idea with him was to, to lose weight and keep it off forever. You know, and, and now he's to the point where he, he said, my kids used to want me to play with them and I dreaded it. I hated even getting out of bed. And he's like, on Sundays now, I run and my kids walk, uh, ride their bikes and we run a mile and a half down to the park. I play with them the whole time and then I run back. Amazing. Like, that's insane. Life. See, those are like unsung heroes. Like nobody wants to make a movie about that guy. But if right. you really think about, uh, you know, how hard it is for him to get out of bed early when he's in pain, he's overweight, his confidence is low, his depression is high. And he still somehow finds a way, probably in large part because you were helping him out, he finds a way to get up there and, and you know, get that run in or get up there and not eat that, you know, b bunch of bread or, or, right, or whatever. Right. He makes these small um, but significant lifestyle decisions mm -hmm. over time. And that it's a grind. It's a total grind. Oh, it's a total grind. And like you said, the small changes. So when I have someone like that, I don't try and throw the whole book at him at once. Yeah. I mean... About a year and a half in, we started, a year in, we really started focusing on flexibility. Before that, it was, we got to focus on the diet, we got to get, you know, the mentality changed, you know, you don't see the scale dropping right away, that's okay. Don't freak out. You know, you want the needle it. moving in six months, you don't want the right. needle moving I mean, a lot. Like... Is, you know, when's the last time you're, I always ask everybody, when's the last time you're happy with the way you look? Oh, I was in high school. Okay, how long ago was that? Oh, 30 years ago. I'm like, okay, so you took 30 years to get where you are now. Oof. All right? It's, it's going to take, yeah. take more than three months to get that back. Okay. Right? It sounds it's like it's not yeah. going to take 30 years, but we'll work towards this lifestyle change that you'll get to a point where you're, you might never get to your high school weight again. Who does? Right. Right? But you'll get to a point where your lifestyle is different and you're going to live a better, longer life. You know, you'll be able to do more. You don't want to go on vacation and, you know, you go to these Mayan ruins and you're like, that'd be cool to climb up there, yeah. but I forgot my walker yeah. and my cane. Yeah, that'd be really cool to see you that from there. Go and do it. Yeah. You know, you live like <laughs> well, that. Thing. Your guys' buy-in is so good at this gym, it sounds like. And um, I've heard so many good things from the patients that we've seen that you've sent over. Like, what is your, like, onboarding for the first, like, three or four weeks when you see people? Like, because clearly they want to keep coming back. They've been coming you for years so what is your strategy with that kind of stuff to get people interested and and keep them interested and keep them interested i mean a lot of your your verbiage sounds awesome for that like what do you guys what is your strategy with that let's just start with small goals find little accomplishments every day you know let's just do this this week let's focus on this as you grow and then you know they start to get in a little better shape and then we throw a workout at them that they're like man that was really hard and it's like well we're going to continue to make it harder I don't care if you've been with me for 10 years, the workouts are gonna continue to challenge you yeah. and, can, and and always not feel like, man, I'm never getting any better, but to feel like, man, he's always pushing us to, to somewhat of an improvement. And then we'll have little challenges at the gym. Um, what you're talking about though, is what I, I think that strength training, it, and to be honest with you, the rehab is a little bit, it, it, there's an art and science to it. So the science you obviously studied, so okay muscle physiology, biomechanics, neurology, whatever. The the thing that makes a trainer really good and you having someone for 13 years is the strongest indicator that you're good at your job, way more than any results you can get in six months or a year. Oh, yeah. Keeping someone for 13 years, Mike Boyle and I, name drop, um, he was just telling me about, you know, when we were saying, oh, these different 
methods that people are using. He's like, apply those methods for 15 years and come and talk to me. The, the, my whole little series I'm putting up on lumbar flexion, like when someone says, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, have your athletes do that for 15 years and see if you're still training them. Right. Right, it just doesn't work. But whereas if you are keeping someone there, they continue to make progress, they continue to be satisfied with what you're doing, it's because of this you know, intuitive, artistic understanding of just changing what they're doing and tailoring everything specifically to them so that you're able to navigate this, these difficult waters of this real life and continue to grind them through better and better and better and better and better, even though you've been training them for, you know, 13 years. It's not like you come in and, all right, well, here's what I do. Okay, we're going to do heavy back squats and this for three weeks, and then we're going to switch to this. You're always tailoring it to them, right. and that's what allows you to get somebody to do that because you're kind of mastering the art of strength training. So to go along with your question like that, like you said, you know, we're, we're constantly varying it. Um, we have a few clients that this is your workout this week, and we're going to do that for three weeks, and, and it's going to be that's what it is. But for a general population, you know, if I'm seeing somebody two hours in a week, I have to fit in. If they're not working on flexibility on their own, i got to add that in. If they're not doing any strength training on their own, we got to do that. If they're not getting their cardio in, we got to do that. So we're constantly varying it. We yeah. have a plan in place sure. that we're following, but we're constantly varying the exercises and varying the workouts to where it's always interesting. It's always different. Yeah, we might have just done all dumbbells the last workout, but this time we're going to use all sandbags this workout. That's just awesome. see how your body like that. responds. That's yeah. very dynamic. You know, awesome. just, just changing it up. Okay, that was great. Now this one we're going to throw cardio in at the beginning with a little bit of weights and just see how you respond to it. And then, okay, they don't you need specific. They don't need, you know, when you put someone on a three week program, you're doing that because the adaptation to that three week program is what you need. Like, okay, I need to get my vertical higher. Okay, you gotta do this wrong, right. or I need my clean right. better. But you know, with like where I'm at in my fitness walk and or fitness journey, and that where a lot of your clients are like, I don't need to make my, the clean heavier or the squat heavier. I need to be able to like move shit at my house and like, oh, okay, we have to move a hundred bags of mulch. Right, right. I can do you this can do and it. I have no problem. And, we, and that's a big selling point at the beginning is, hey, when you're at home and you're working in the garden, this is how you should do yes. it. Yeah. You know, I never have to twist. Oh, how do you put your seatbelt on? How do you grab a box when you're in a- Really, awkward? never There's twist, really. Like, no, I walk granted. forward, you know? Or like, you know, you throw in things, a lateral movement and they're like really struggling with it. And it's like, well, you don't travel laterally very often. But say this winter you slip on the ice and got to go lateral. Now you're you're safe. You're okay. Or your dog trips you. You're not going to yeah. tear your ACL out. Yeah, yeah. You have some strength. You have some balance. We we take an approach that puts a little bit of everything in it. We kind of combined uh, strength training, cardio, a little bit of flexibility. We 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 put it all into a workout, and then it, it the person feels and is getting their function. They're, they're 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 functioning for real life. And, and they're healthier and they're just feeling better. Yeah, I, I, it, it, obviously CrossFit gets a bad rap, but I-, I It has its place for people. To, certain well, people. but you, so I can, I, I can, I can talk about CrossFit for hours, but- I mean, I did CrossFit for five years myself, yeah. competition training and everything. I yeah. learned a lot from it. Yeah, one of the things that I like that they, that, uh, they, they say is that you want to be prepared for the unknown and the unknowable. So it's kind of cool. Like, you know, I don't think that that means butterfly kipping pull-ups on a, on a, on a rig, but like, no. I love the idea of, well, what are we doing? And I, and, and I- Constantly I, varied. Yep, constantly. So for me, it's, the definition is constantly varied high intensity functional movements. If you take out the high intensity, and it's not, because it's not always that, I love constantly varied. I do that with my training. I'm not, I'm rarely ever doing the same workout, right. you know, twice in the same week. You have a goal in mind though. Yeah, you and I are, are very functional, Based. So I'm going to use by functional. There's a couple ways to define it, but by functional for me, it means like it, it represents the thing or mimics the things that I do every day more than something else. So a lifting up a sandbag off the ground is going to be more functional to me than doing a leg press. You're right. Absolutely. Or, so something like that. But and then the constantly varied is good because I'm not training specifically for anything other than just being fit for life. Now the high intensity piece, that one's a difficult one for me to define because like oftentimes I'm trying to go with the with the maximum intensity for whatever the, the workout is. So if it's for an hour, then I might try to get as many watts on my bike in an hour. 
Um, if it's for three minutes, well, then I'm going to go maximum intensity for that time if paced properly. But I don't do that every time. There's a huge value to coming in sometimes and all right, I'm just going to move for 30 minutes and I'm not going to go just balls out. I'm just going to just go through these movements and just feel good. Just, you know, get in that, you know, the triathlete, I'd say like zone two, just, just go, just zone two, just keep moving. That's the only difference I'd say, but like what you're doing, this constantly varied thing, I think is high value to people because you want them, whether they're going to go over their buddy's house and they have to move a refrigerator, right? So that's more literally high intensity, like actual, like high force, maximal contraction kind of thing. Or you just got to go help your buddy, like build a fence. So that's going to be all day, six, eight, 10 hours of doing light amounts of lifting, but just consistently throughout the whole day. It's like a longer, right. you know, event. You just want to make sure that your clients are ready to do all of this. Doesn't matter what it is. And do it in a way that's safe too. Yeah. You know, and, and kind of like, with, back to your question, you know, what do we do? We, we also, let's figure out every pain, problem, and issue that you have with your body. Now let's take that workout, and, and during that workout at some point, let's put a little bit of physical therapy in there sure. to also work on that shoulder that you had surgery on years ago. Yes. You know, I ask people all the time, or I tell people all the time, it's like, how many people do you talk to that had shoulder surgery or shoulder replacement or whatever that it feels like crap now? but it felt great after they got done with physical therapy. It never felt better. Well, yeah, two years ago when you were doing physical therapy, it was great. And since then you haven't done anything. Right. So it's just deteriorated back to what it was. Right, that it, was it was so yeah. funny. <laughs> so one of those patients that I had, put that, show. <laughs> one of the patients that I had, literally I was like, oh, well, I mean, I'm gonna have you do this for a little bit, just work on it. She's like, oh, Anthony's already having me do that anyway. So I was like, Go great. Yeah. You don't even why are you, why are you, are you here? Why are you, why are you here? <laughs> like, he's doing everything great over there. Just don't let me mess it up. Just yeah. keep listening to what he's saying. I want to put my spin on the variety piece because I, I've been doing, uh, I'm interested in the neuro world. So like adding variety to the workouts is huge for like being ready for whatever the world throws at you. But variety in terms of the brain is huge. So like, yeah. especially when you talk about working with a 95 year old, uh, a client or like people in their 70s that could potentially be a humongous thing for them where uh, the research so shows like things like parkinson's variety and exercise afferents are, afferents, bro. afferents some of the biggest things for those people so without even afferents, knowing you afferents know, you, is, is basically information going into the brain so right like so like adding variety to the workout driving a different way to work that day things that like challenge the brain is like you could be providing some of these services that are Act like life changing things that we can do a little bit in here, but at the end of the day, that would like we don't have the time within 15 minute slots to well, I always, some of that. Yeah, with that, I always say that like you need reps for resiliency. I always say that. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah. I, I tell people too, when they first start with me, I tell people, listen, you're not gonna come work out with me, and, and in six months, you're gonna reach all your goals and you're gonna leave. This is gonna be a long term thing. Yeah, I look at it from a long term approach right away. Like, right. Like, you, know, there's no, there's you no have to this, because, like, you know, if I, I have a lady that she will not work on her flexibility. So she comes to me twice a week and during one of those sessions, she's always like, I'm ready to lift some weights and I'm ready to burn some calories. And I'm like, great, we're going to go over here, grab a band and start with some stretches. And she's like, what? I'm like, well, you're, if you're not going to do it on your own, you're going to do it with me. Yeah. You need this more than that heavy lifting over there. Well, you're almost like triaging and we have to do this in here too. Somebody walks on the door and we have to kind of like. We call it classifying them. So you have to classify them. Like, all right, what's the main thing they need to work on? Or triaging. You come in, you're like, okay, cool. You know, our, you know, Mrs. Jones, what are your goals? And they're going to have goals. And then you're going to do an assessment. You're going to look at, like, them, what, they, what they're right. bringing to the table. And you're going to like, you know what? You can't get anywhere close to a fold-up squat because your hips are so stinking tight. So we're not going to do fold-up squatting with weight. We're going to work on your hip mobility so that you're able to actually do these things with body weight first, and then you can go from there, it's great. Yeah, my dad was a great example too. He came in and he gets done with the workout, the first workout he does with me, he's got degenerative discs in his neck, he's had back surgery, he's got shoulder issues, this and that. And he's like, we're done? I'm like, yeah, we're done. He's like, that wasn't a workout, that was physical therapy. Hmm. I'm like, that's all right, we'll see. We'll come back again, do it for three weeks. come yeah. back again. He does it again, does it again. He's like, when are we gonna start doing the stuff that you know makes you look good, makes you feel good? like?" A, I said, well, we're doing the stuff that makes you feel good. The stuff that you want to do, like the curls and the heavy squats and the chest presses, that's the stuff that's going to get you hurt right now. Can, yeah. So let's build a foundation and then grow into it 
And then he got to the point where he was starting to do that stuff. He's like, man, I'm really feeling good. I'm like, yeah, you're feeling good oh. and you're staying away from injuries right now. You're able to go do Which your is, job. Which is work absolutely life-changing for somebody. If, yeah, absolutely. If you've got somebody, you know, for me with just my history, you know, if when I'm moving well and I, and, and, and I feel good and I'm like, oh, man, this is, it's just totally different than having to, like, deal with, you know, the repercussions of trying to make... <laughs> Trying to keep up with real athletes, or just keeping up with younger work. people, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, like for me, it was my, my I always joke like I was basically a Honda Accord trying to race Ferraris, and right. you know, you can run that engine only so hot before it starts to just like rattle That's and break. But yeah. well, the reason I went and saw you is I had seven years of chronic back pain, blew out my back in college, didn't really do a whole lot for it, um, would blow it out every now and then, not using my core right. You know, the first time I came to you, I remember you saying. Well, your core's weak. And I'm like, I left. I'm like, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> I've done so many workouts. My core's not weak. And you're like, all right, here's what I want you to start with. Just get on a bar, hang, and start with some Tabata hollow holds. I'm like, okay, how hard can that be? Got done with the first 20 seconds. Get up there for the second 20 seconds, and I'm dropping in five seconds. I'm like, I can't do this. Nope. My core's weak. <laughs> you know, it's like, he was okay, right. you're real quick. <laughs> it's really hard to explain. I guess I'll go back. <laughs> it's hard to explain to people because you can, it's not so much that, like people and like good athletes or whatever, that they have a weak core. It's that the the strategy that they're using to stabilize using their core it. is actually causing their injury. Right. So you know, That's a lot of point. times in the weightlifting world, I call it an extension compression stabilizing strategy, which is a little bit you know heavy on the tongue, but it's when you overuse your posterior chain and that squishes the back down and can produce all kinds of injuries. Right. When you can improve how well they stabilize the strategy, the technique that they're using, then they're able to move, even do squats where you flex your lumbar spine a little bit without any pain because you're stabilizing correctly. And I know that you do this because, you know, working with our mutual friend, um, you know, he's able to do a lot of things that he couldn't do before because he's doing it with a correct pattern. That's, that's the difference. And explaining that to athletes that are good or like, you know, somebody that walks in the door and they can squat 700 pounds and I'm telling them that, you know, well, they're not really stabilizing properly as I think how I, I, I cue it now, as opposed to like your core is weak. I think that right. that was, you know, ignorance on my part. Was just, <laughs> no, it's just, a, it, it's, it's not an accurate explanation because right. you're talking about your core is weak. Normally with lifting, a strong core is able to resist bending, right? And you can stiffen your spine in a lot of ways. Some are better than others. So the, the more accurate way to explain that is that, that the strategy you're using is not helpful for your condition, right? Maybe right, that's exactly. the best way to do it. We're just giving them awareness on, like, these are these are other ways. Afferents. 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 Afferents is a better term. <laughs> oh, this is a joke between, it's not even a joke between Brad and I. It's just, like, true. there's so many things that we do. I think that, like, we're always talking about the, you know, the mechanism of action is a, is a medical rehabby term for, like, well, what, how is this making the progress? Or how is this making the improvement? And I literally can tie almost everything that we do down to efforts. So it's not yeah, that we're stretching yeah, we're... tissue or anything like that. It's that like you're actually sending information to the brain and the brain's adaptation or response to that, that, that message is what happens. You know this in the strength training world, somebody comes in, they start squatting. We know that they don't actually have any physiological adaptations for you know nine to 12 weeks. And yet you can see a, a sharp change in their strength. So their squat goes up, but it's, it ain't because they're the cross-sectional diameter of their muscles got bigger, it's because their brain got better at like doing that thing. Right. So yeah. we always jokingly say afferents, afferents just afferents. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you, you're big into, it sounds like, like, the motivational stuff, changing lifestyle. So not just the, the training portion, but changing their mind. Yeah, absolutely. So not to like derail this conversation, but do you have, what, what are your uh, people you look up to or books that you might read in terms of like, human optimization or motivational stuff do you have references podcasts to podcasts whatever. actual humans that have never published any anything yeah there's a plug I, right here actually i like to uh that's funny that's not i get on rogan and i listen to his podcast yeah. and he has like let's do some professional shrooms. athletes on yeah or people <laughs> that have done extreme sports or you know and hearing their approach to how they 
change that. It mindset. is kind of fun. And, I mean, you can listen to more of the mindset stuff. Yeah. Of that athlete or of that. Yeah, person. you got to yeah. tease through like three hours of that, but his stuff's right. great. But it's got some good stuff. He had Jordan Burroughs on the. Um, it's some bad stuff. Along, yeah, sure, <laughs> he would admit that. But um, he had Jordan Burroughs on. Jordan Burroughs is like one of the greatest wrestlers ever. And listening to Jordan with his mindset and just kind of that stuff is really, really impressive. Yeah, so I, I like Jordan Burroughs right behind Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> in terms of grace for wrestlers, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure Stone Cold Steve Austin has actually been on Joe Rogan, oddly enough. But, um, no, he was a real wrestler. Not to imply that Stone Cold Steve Austin is a real wrestler. He was real. I thought he was. We'll save this argument for another time. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know was. that's a productive thing. Who? <laughs> I thought he was real. Who? Stone Cold Steve yeah, Austin? for a long time. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, oh, I, mean, I can talk for, for a long time about <laughs> Jordan Burroughs. But, yeah, so the... Um, I mean, I guess let's kind of just go meathead here for a little bit. What kind of exercises do you like in the weight room? What kind of exercises? Yeah, do you like? I mean, just what, what if you're going to walk into the weight room, what are the movements that sort of, you know, you get excited about? Pendlay rows. No. Oh, you're ben liking pendlay rows. I like bent-over rows. Hmm. Any kind of bent-over row I like. We sw- Yeah, when there? I worked out with you, yeah. we did we did them on a, an inclined bench. Now, mm-hmm. why is that? Uh, I like a pendlay row because you can – Add more weight to your lift safely. So you're you're doing one rep at a time. You're in a, a more headlight s- rows. For those of you that don't know what that is, is you're using bumper plates like Olympic lifts plates, and you actually have the plates on the ground, so it's a static start. And you're just pulling off the ground, so it's like a it's basically a a barbell row, but you're setting the weight down in between each rep. So it's like a a row a row version of a deadlift, basically. Yeah, you're, you're resetting each time, so it allows you to focus on your core. Tighten up everything, you know, activate all your muscles that you're going to be using, then do the lift, as opposed to grabbing the bar, bending over, you're in this weird position that's pulling well, you your back. Your form gets in, worse and worse and worse. Your form gets worse as you go. You start shortening your movement. You're pulling it in the wrong space. Um, outside of that, I like any kind of lunge variation. Um, I'm a big fan of lunge. Yeah. I used to be a big bench presser, but I, I've got shoulder issues now. And bench, I, I, I benched yesterday for the first time yeah? in forever. Yeah, one of my guys was like, let's go heavy up. Huh? Is my shoulder gonna hold up? Yeah, I do once in a while, right? Two seventy five for two. I'm happy. Not bad, man. Not for, not for benching in a long time. Yeah, I'm not. But I've never been super good at benching. But every once in a while, we'll throw it in there. But lately, uh, my favorite, or I guess my go to, more because of you know meniscus injuries and things, is just static holds. Ooh, you know, do a little isometrics. Just, just well, straight. That's very nineteen nineties of you. So mm-hmm. going like split squat with a heavy kettlebell and holding it for thirty seconds. Yeah, and then right into a sled walk. Just more functional. Oh, he's, doing, he's, doing, he's doing drags, too. Oh, I hate those. Yeah. So pushes and drags and carries but my, are so If, if I'm going to write a workout, it's going to be like a manual labor style workout. Like we're going to move this heavy stuff from here and put it over here. And then we're going to carry some heavy stuff and put it over there. And then we're going to put this heavy stuff over your head. And it's awkward. Yeah. And we're going to throw some bamboo in there. You know, oh, the bamboo, that, the bamboo bars. If I used barbells as much as I used to, I would have, I would love those. And most of my stuff is all dumbbell work. I don't use a ton of barbell, but it's usually like uh, strongman stuff, uh, dumbbell work, and just awkward movements and things yeah. that are hard. That's like very just functional. Like, let's just grab this sled and we're gonna drag it. Let's yeah. go. How far can we go? Yeah, it's just. I think that sled is like mentally, drills. you have to push through harder yeah. than most. I think I think push pulls and uh, carries are, are massively underutilized across the board for the most part. Unless there's something that's just kind of into that, but those are incredibly important. And in, in with the, some of the stuff that I've I've talked about when I'm teaching, is there's different expressions, so to speak, of like trunk stability. And one of them that's rarely ever trained is what I call trunk stability endurance. So stability, I said to get overly picky, is the ability to control the joint's positioning, right? And that when we say trunk. You know, we're doing core work, we right. mean stability. And there's a difference between stability and stiffness. Stiffness is the ability to prevent movement. Um, st- uh, stability is the ability to control movement, right? Fine. Well, one thing that we never train when we're training is trunk stability endurance. Normally you're doing, you know, strength where your holds are 20 seconds or they're just like repeated contractions for a little while. But we're not doing this like, all right, can you maintain a sustained you know, trunk activation for 20 minutes. Or, right, and most know, people can't. They cannot. Whereas if you're doing walking, sure, it's undulating intensity, but like if you've got, if you're just 
dragging something, especially if it's like a uni, I don't know if you've ever done it yet, but if you have them hold a rope and it's over one shoulder, so that's creating, you know, um, an asymmetrical force. So now they have to actually activate their core. Just, all right, just drag that for 20 minutes. Switch right. sides whenever you want. Doesn't right. matter. Go ahead and walk backwards. You got to hold it in only one hand. Yeah. So that asymmetrical force creates a torsional force to their, their, their trunk. And then they have to activate it a ton, but do it for 20 minutes. And so it's a great little workout. It doesn't have to be incredibly heavy or impossible. Like they should be able to finish the workout right. fine. It's challenging, but doable. Yeah. Like I do carries a lot with a sandbag, unilateral carries. So it's on right shoulder, left shoulder. And I'll just go and walk for 40 minutes with a sandbag in my neighborhood, which I get dirty looks, of course, every time. Right. But it's not a heavy sandbag. And I'm not, you know, put it down whenever you want. And every time I put it down, I got to do five cleans. Yeah, Switch shoulders and then just keep going. <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah, but I mean, it's not like I'm trying to hold a 120-pound or sandbag and do that. I'm just do holding. Like, uh, do you like farmer carries, different variations? So my my thing with that, so I really only do unilateral carries. So if you think about this, this is we do, we do both. No, I, I know you do, but I don't do bilateral carries because the way that that activates the core brings with it an excessive amount of compression on the spine. Okay. For me, that doesn't work. For most people, it's totally fine. What I would tell people is that you want to use it still an asymmetrical load. Because if you're holding, let's say, two 35-pound kettlebells, the core activation is actually from you overcoming the momentum, the inertia of the bell. So when you step forward, they don't want to go anywhere. They don't want to go anywhere. And so then you have to activate your core to pull them forward. Then you put your foot on the ground. Now they want to keep going forward and you have to activate your core to slow them down. Right. But if you're just standing in place, they don't activate your core at all because they're just compressing your spine. If you were to hold a 53 in one side and a 26 in the other, now let's say it's in your left hand, it's a 53. Even standing there, there's a bending force right. bending you to the left. So you have to turn on your right lateral flexors. So now as you're walking, having a little bit of an asymmetrical force minimizes the actual compression on the spine and maximizes the activation of the core. That's a little snobby, but I would do either an asymmetrical load or I'm just going to, most of the time, I'm going to do a unilateral load. So yeah, I like to mix it up. That so, was great. So someday, like day one, we'll do that, you know, heavy on one side, light overhead, you know, we're doing both. Another day, we're doing a bear hug walk. That's a terrible sandbag. Those are so, your yeah. heart rate Every 20 skyrockets. Every and do five squats. Yeah, whatever. your heart rate skyrockets oh, yeah. with those. It, it like compresses your chest. You can't even breathe. You can't breathe a ton. Part. Yeah. And then we'll do like, uh, you know, a regular farmer carry, and then we'll do towel farmer carries where you wrap a towel around the kettlebells and you have to hold the towels Ooh. instead. Oh, that's some yeah, nasty that's, grip like shit that. right there, yeah, bro. It crushes the grip. I like yeah, I wouldn't I carry. I them. wouldn't carry unless you would allow me to do like a two kilo kettlebell. I probably wouldn't go very long, just like you, know, you gripping. Yeah, it's like using the fat grips almost. If you've ever used those, also great. Um, I have terrible grip though, so. But I think a lot of that like awful workouts that I like to do comes from growing up on a farm. Yes. You know, ten years old. You know, right before school, my dad's like, grab that five gallon bucket and fill it up with water and take it out to the chickens. You know, and you're like carrying this five gallon bucket on one side and then you get <laughs> home and he's like, see that pile over there? Drag every single piece of brush for the next three hours all the way to the back. So you're working bailing hours crew? Of sled drags with a, what's that? You ever worked a bailing crew? I have not. Bailing hay? Oh. Bailing hay is like the most farmer. I've, I've done where we take it and put it into a loft. Which Same thing, yeah. Yeah. just yeah, yeah. taking bales of hay, rotating and pre I mean it, yeah. your core is wrecked when you do that and you're covered in hay itchy as hell and your forms are cut your up, forms are cut up and, 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 and the, in the barn it's like 3,000 right. degrees where you're putting the and hay. You have to wear long sleeves. Or we need to we, I, wish, I wish Ben were here because Ben's done that a lot. I've done it a lot. And he hates it. I'm just dreaming of ice water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the worst. Yeah. Just dreaming of ice water. I don't know. So you're from a farm actually? Yeah, so uh, we didn't farm land. We had some animals, and then yeah. over time, we got rid of the animals and just had acreage and maintained the acreage. And then when I was a freshman in high school, actually, our house got hit by a tornado, and we had tons of trees. So for like two, three years, every day after school, my dad's like, go dig this hole for this tree, dig this hole for this tree, take this tree and cut it up and take it over here. So it was like nonstop work. manual labor work. 
Yeah. And now I've kind of put that into my workouts where it's yeah. like, yeah. especially if I'm working out with a friend, it's like, how much, how much mentally tougher can I be than you? Because <laughs> yeah. uh, it's the same weight. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It, it's, I don't know, it's fun to me. Oh, I love it. Yeah, the, the t a few times that we've worked out here, it's just kind of fun. Like, we just sort of like, figure out oh, what do you want to do today? Are we going to do like normal strength training stuff? Or do you want to do like little fitnessy thing with a little elevated heart rate? What do we want to use? Yeah. Oh, you got a sled. Cool. Let's do a sled thing. Yeah. Or, oh, let's grab the sandbag and let's just sort of do that. Me and my buddy right now, that's our workouts right now. It's like, all right, what's the theme today? This is what our theme is. And then mid workout, we're like, oh, let's get our heart rate up a little bit and we'll write something. We both look at it and we're like, that looks terrible. Wait, let's add this in. Yeah. That looks way worse. That's all right, let's go. <laughs> all right, Charles, here we go. Yeah, uh, Dan John calls it playground rules. And, and yeah. three days a week, I, I go to the gym and just do like bro sessions with my wife. And it's just playground rules. We'll walk up and be like, oh, let's do this. Oh, they're using that. All right, let's go over here. All right, cool. Let's just grab this thing. We'll just do something with this for a while. Right. And we just basically just pick it, you know, four to eight sets with something. Right. Go until like, yeah, I'm done with this movement. Let's go on to something else. That's, that, that, that's it. There's no thought process for like, okay, we're going to go in. We're going to work just biceps for a little while with some more right. recorders. It's fun to do it that way. Yeah, we love like it. Yesterday, I was like, I'll what are you doing? There. I got a half hour. I'll, I'll join you. He's like, all right, warm up 75 bench push-ups. I'm like, 75 right off the bat, that's the warm up. And he's like, you can break them up, throw some lateral raises in or <laughs> something with it, just warm up the shoulder or something like that. That's cool. Yeah. That's good stuff, man. Um, this has been uh, fun to have you in here. What, how do we get a hold of you? How does one get a hold of you? So, where, where are you located? Um, but a little bit more accurate, I know it's by Cheryl's Cookies, of yes. course. Um, <laughs> we're, we're in Westerville, uh, back to basics movement and training. Um, and a website? Website is under construction right now um not up it is not up it is under construction i love this uh, is there a phone the, the best way to get hold of us is email google us and instagram instagram we're on instagram oh cool um i gotta look at my handle i'm never on it well, let's look it up tie back to basics i would assume i i would assume but it let's might check we'll check you're too busy training clients that's right <laughs> you're in the trenches exactly Oh, look at that. Oh, nice. It's uh, Back to Basics 614. Okay, there you go. Uh, so find us on Instagram. And then if you Google us, we have email and phone number and all that on there. Very cool. Um, check us out. No, it's been great. I mean, you've been a lot of fun to work with, and it's been easy sending people back and forth. So we'll uh, continue to do the same. So thanks for coming into the, the yeah. lounge. Appreciate yeah, it. Appreciate <laughs> Good it. Good time. Yeah, all right, thanks, man. Yeah, when you're talking about. They usually say, with CrossFit, I thought you were going to say, uh, if you're a chiropractor, put your office across from a CrossFit gym. Oh, God. <laughs>